Welcome to Rosh Hashanah, before Rosh Hashanah, part 13. Today we're going to be learning three short Mishnahs, Pera Gimel, the third chapter of Rosh Hashanah, Mishnah Beis. The Mishnah now starts to deal with the mitzvah of blowing shoifer on Rosh Hashanah. Says the Mishnah, Kol HaShoifer is Ksherin Chutz Mishol Pora. All animal horns are kosher for the mitzvah of shoifer besides the one that comes from a cow. Because the horn that comes from a cow is not called a shofar, it's called a keren. Omar Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi argues and he says, I will bring you a reference that any shofar is also called a keren. Shemar, as it says, Bim shoif, the keren hayoval is a pasuk in Tanakh, when they make a long blast with the ram's keren. So you see even a shofar from, from a ram is called a keren. The Gemara explains that the First opinion responds to Rabbi Yossi by saying that it is true that any shofar can be called a keren, but the keren from a cow is never called a shofar, and therefore it's not valid to be used for the shofar of Rosh Hashanah. Continue Mishnah Gimel, the third Mishnah. Shofar shal Rosh Hashanah shal Yoel Poshet. The Mishnah now deals with what is the preferable shofar to use. It says the Mishnah that the shofar of Rosh Hashanah particularly referring to the one that was blown in the Beis Amigdash, should come from a wild goat, which is poshut. It's straight and simple, symbolizing the simplicity and the purity of the davening of the prayer that is supposed to take place on Rosh Hashanah. The Gemara brings the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda, who argues and says, no, it should specifically come from a ram, because a ram's shofar is bent and twisted, symbolizing the subjugation and the humility that is necessary on Rosh Hashanah. Continues the Mishnah, Upiv Metsupezov, the mouthpiece, not really the mouthpiece directly that went into the mouth, but around the mouthpiece should have a covering of gold, min hatstodin, and two trumpets on either side of the shoifer. Shoifer Marich Vakatsoitsrois Mekatsrois, in the base Amigdash, when the shoifer will be blown, the shoifer sound would continue on for a longer time, whereas the trumpet sound would stop shorter. Because the mitzvah of the day is the shofar, and therefore to show that and demonstrate that, the shofar sound went for longer. Mishnah Dalid, the fourth Mishnah. The Ta'aniyos, on a fast day, where they would also blow trumpets and shofars. There, Bishol Schorim. There, they would use a shofar that comes from a ram, Kafufin, which was bent and twisted, Upihen Mitzupe Kesef, there, the mouthpiece was covered in silver, but the two trumpets would be in the middle. The shofar would blow a shorter sound, and the sounds of the trumpets would go for longer. Because as the Pasuk says, that on fast days we blow trumpets, and that's the main mitzvah, and therefore that's demonstrated by on the fast days, the trumpet sounds going longer, and the shofar sounds in fact going for shorter. Shana Tava, have a